Hello, hello, this is Alex Burkett, and you can listen to my podcast, The Long Game, streaming now on Amazon Music. Join us for personal and professional success stories where long-term thinking triumphs, and you can hear about the frameworks, principles, mindsets, and learnings that drive success in business and content marketing. Find and follow us in the Amazon Music app to get every episode. Hello, hello. Welcome to The Long Game Podcast. Today, I talk with Tim Stoddart, And y'all, this episode has been my very favorite so far. Tim is partner and CEO of Copyblogger, owner of Stodzy Inc., and founder of Sober Nation, a go-to resource for those struggling with addiction and substance abuse-related disorders. Tim's career path has been one of the most fascinating stories I've ever heard. And in this episode, we dive into all things entrepreneurship, writing, agency building, career growth, and how to make the very best peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You are going to want to listen till the very end. So without further ado, here's Tim. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm really excited to chat with you today. Um, I know we've we've talked a couple times before, but I figured we could get this conversation um, on on the podcast and tell our listeners a little bit more about you. I'm thrilled. Yeah, thank you. I uh, I enjoyed the chats that we had so far as well. And so when you invited me on here, I said absolutely. I'd love to come <laughs> on. So I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, I'd love to start with just getting kind of a brief introduction, um, more of an intro in your words, and not what you'd put on your. Twitter bio, <laughs> and then telling um, telling me a little bit about how you spend your days these days. Great, um, <laughs> that's like an amazing <laughs> opening question. Yeah, you, you gotta rid me from the formalities, right? Well, my name's Tim Stoddart. Um, I'm born and raised in Philadelphia. I currently live in Nashville. Um, my life is kind of boring, but like pretty great <laughs> at the same time because. I know what I like and I just do the things that I like as often as I can. So my life consists of writing online. Um, obviously, I'm very entrepreneurial and I'm, I'm sure we're going to talk about that stuff. But mm-hmm. there's a part of me that always feels like if somebody asks, like, what do I do? Um, I've, I've gotten I've gotten rid of the, um, what's it called? Where you feel like a fraud, you know, the imposter um, syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've gotten rid of the imposter You've syndrome. gotten rid of it so much you forgot what it's called. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. impressive. Thanks. I've um, I've I've worked past that enough to where when people ask me like, "What do I do? What do I do?" I, I say like, "I'm an entrepreneur." Um, I'm like okay with saying that now, but okay. there's also a part of me that feels like what I really am is a writer because everything that I've ever done or created or um, even like stumbled upon in my life has been a byproduct of of writing. Um, and so my days are spent waking up early, doing my writing. I drink my coffee in the morning, and that's like a really part of my important part of my <laughs> life. Um, I work out every day. I I do Muay Thai. Mm-hmm. I got a really cool wife who I love a lot. We have a <laughs> son. Um, and I got a pit bull. I, I love pit bulls. I've I've raised pit bulls um for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. And uh I wish I had like more exciting shit to say. Like my life is really regimented, like a really routine oriented. I thrive in that kind of way. Um, But it's given me some like freedom because Mm -hmm. we travel a lot as well. And so even when we travel and like go to new places and see new things, I still have my, my structure of my life, which I think in a weird way, like this rigid structure that I live by, it kind of gives me the freedom to do all of the things that I want to do as well. Oh yeah. You know, so, so that's yeah. me. That's that makes a lot of sense. I've felt a lot of freedom and routine too. It seems like the antithesis of, of freedom, but I feel like when you have the, the basics down and you have kind of, you know, physical health, mental health, relational health, like when all that stuff seems taken care of, it gives you freedom to kind of do a lot of other things. So I totally understand that. Yeah, and it's it's counterintuitive in that you would think that freedom is being like a leaf in the wind, right? Like I I can go where I want to go when I want to go. I have I have absolute like utility of my time, but in life, 
when you actually try to like apply freedom to life, because there's a difference between like theory and reality, oh, right? Yeah. And the reality is that anytime I've lived that kind of way, um, the utility of like my own decision making eroded a bit because I was always just sort of at the whim of the circumstances around me that I couldn't control. And yeah. So, and so like when I, I control the things that I can control, I think it gives me more, I use the word utility again, utility over the things that like I don't have control over because they, they don't affect me as much, you know? So it took yeah. a long time to learn that lesson, but, but I got there. That's awesome. So I want to go back a bit to when you forgot what imposter syndrome is called <laughs> and how you said you had gotten over it. I'm going to ask the question of how, because I'm sure everyone wants to know that. And I, I also want to know that because I struggle with that a bit. Um, yeah. yeah. So if that goes into telling a little bit about more of your story, that's awesome. Or if you have kind of your quick, succinct how-to, that's great too. I don't have a quick, succinct how-to. Um, I just have a journey. Like a lot of, <clears throat> I've built a strange online persona because so much of what I learned and what I do comes from like my experience from addiction and recovery. And so many of like the lessons I've learned in my life come from that. And so mm -hmm. it's only been natural that as I've become more involved with like running my own companies and I've uh, been successful, I guess you could say that um, I've like had to sort of talk about these lessons because it's, right. it's just how I learned how to do all the stuff I know how to do. Right. And so, and so it's, it's a strange mix where sometimes I don't know if I'm speaking to like sober Tim, who's out to help other people that are still struggling, or if I'm mm -hmm. talking to like entrepreneurial Tim that is telling like, Hey, this is how I did it. And you know, this is how I run my businesses and, and that, and over time, there was never like a ha moment where it just clicked for me. I, I just started thinking a lot about what labels mean because I, there was a, a lot of my career, I guess you could say, where I felt like, oh, I'm either I have to put on like the sober guy, Tim label, yeah. or I have to put on like the entrepreneur, Tim label. And I don't know. I think it happens when you get older. Like I'm 36 now. I kind of stopped caring so much about what <laughs> other people think of me because that was like really crippling for me for a lot of my life, you know? And I just started realizing like this is completely irrelevant and none of it actually matters. Like I'm actually a combination of all of the things that I am. Mm -hmm. And uh and so like as I started just sinking into that, I think is a good way to put it, like slowly just falling into understanding who I am. I started realizing that like, if somebody asked me what I do, there was years and years where I would just say like, oh, I do stuff on the internet. You know, I, I don't really know. Like I, I have a marketing agency and then I built some websites sometimes and like I, <laughs> I built an online company and yeah. I, I could always just tell like, okay, I don't really get it. You, you seem like you're hiding something. Mm -hmm. um, and that wasn't true. I just wasn't comfortable saying that like I'm an entrepreneur because mm -hmm. to me it felt like that was a level above where I, I was, you know? Yeah. Um, and so just over time, the, the, the best way I can, I can say is, is just this like slow sinking into it where like, you know, I relax, like, you know, when you're stretching or something and you have to like breathe into a stretch and like, it takes a long time and you just kind of sink. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's sort of how it happened for me where I, I, I realized that I actually was just an entrepreneur. That's who I am. That's awesome. Yeah. The slow acceptance of things that I think we're told our whole lives, but we don't really believe that's when it kind of clicks for you. And it's, it's such a slow burn. Like, I don't think you people, you learn that stuff in like the blink of an eye or just one more book or just one more quote we see on Instagram. It's like, yeah. not, not like that. <laughs> it just happens. Um, but yeah, that's really cool. I think I'm still in the process of sinking into my own. <laughs> Let me know when you figure it out. All right. <laughs> Hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I've I've loved reading your story and I want I want to hear you talk a little bit more. I know you said earlier, like you're a writer. That's one way you define yourself. And writing has we don't remember exactly how you said it, but you said it has led to a lot of things in your life, or just by writing things, it's kind of opened certain doors. So I'd I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Well, 
Um, it's funny that you bring this up too, because this is something I've been thinking about a lot recently as well. Um, because I've, I've observed that it's not actually the writing, it's the publishing, because there's like a really? big, big, big difference. Hmm. You can write in notebooks and you can paint your masterpieces and keep them stacked up in your closet for nobody to see. But it's the actual like act of hitting that publish button, which has led to just things that I, I didn't necessarily plan for. Yeah. You know, things that things happen when you put yourself out there, I, I guess mm -hmm. is is the best way to put it. And um and I really can I mean, even meeting my wife, um, my wife saw the stuff that I had been publishing online for a long time. And I guess like she was reading it for a while. This was when I was living in South Florida and, and she lived in Boston. And one day I just <clears throat> got a strange message from some weird hippie chick. I was like, Hey, like I've been reading your stuff for a while. I just want you to know that like I've been following you and, and I enjoy it's amazing. Yeah. What you write. And so um, I, I think that the, power of like sharing yourself is much more than what we think of it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Like when you share your writing or anything really like this idea of, of hitting publish is something that I'm having a hard time defining because it's, it's really just a metaphor for like sharing yourself. Right. And so some people hit publish by like lifting weights and that's just their way of like expressing who they mm -hmm. are. Some people hit publish by, you know, like the easier ones by painting or the, the ones that are more literal that like we totally mm -hmm. understand. Some people hit publish by, I mean, I told you I train Muay Thai a lot. Like I see a lot of people who find ways to express their ideas through like violence in a weird way, you know, and mm -hmm. it's like really beautiful. Um, and so the writing has just been my, my personal way that I've fallen into that. My mom was a writer. I've just, I read Harriet the Spy when I was really little. Like, I, that was I like love a really, that book. yeah, that was like an important thing for me because I just thought it was so cool that she carried a notebook around with her everywhere. And, yeah. and I mean, you know, you can't actually see on my camera, but there's a bookshelf right there where I keep all my notebooks. So I got like all the notebooks that I've, I've written wow. throughout my life, stacks and stacks of them. And it's, it's been like a really important professional but also like spiritual process for me to mm -hmm. just remind myself that like I have, it's, it's not an obligation to anybody else. It's an obligation to myself to like shed who I am continuously, because then it's like a process of like revealing more and more of yourself. And so like, I've learned who I am through doing that. And it's a cool byproduct that like cool shit happens to me through the process of trying to be better. And yeah. I've done all that through writing. That's so interesting. Would you say that you were ever like a shy person? Or more of a, shy. Okay. Because I feel like yeah. the, the, the action of publishing and putting yourself out there, as painful as it is, it's almost like the best antidote for that. Not sure. that shyness is anything to inherently fix, but if you don't want to be a shy or you feel like you have something important to share the process of like almost doing the exact opposite of what you want to do is like what the only thing that you really need to do. Yeah. There's, there's no question. It's well, it painfully shy, <laughs> you know, and, and still really? am every time I get on a podcast, the whole entire time I'm thinking to myself, like, this isn't coming out right. You know, like I can't get my thoughts out there. I can't, I feel like I I'm literally am thinking the same thing too. So yeah. <laughs> I, I think more people think it than they actually talk about. I, th I think you're right. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. It's, I don't want to say like it, it plagued me, but it, it prevented me from just being who I wanted to be for a long time. Um, and it was through that like shedding experience of, of publishing my work yeah. that you, you learn two things. One, you learn that nobody actually cares that much. Right? <laughs> like it's not actually a big deal. And then you also learn that worst case scenario, people really, really care and something bad happens. You learn that like you're not going to die and you're totally fine. And it's, it's, a, it's like a, a survival mechanism, really. Like It sounds dramatic when I talk about it this way, but it is the core 
mechanism in your brain that is screaming at you like, no, 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 don't stand out from the crowd. Don't isolate yourself. Don't put your ideas out there because it's like, we're not wired to live in the way that we live now. We're wired to, you know, like be cooped up in a cave. And if you speak out, you might offend the chief and then the chief might fucking like chop your head off or yeah. worse, throw you out of the cave to fend for yourself in the wilderness, you know? So I don't, I don't take it lightly. Like it is hundreds of thousands of years of evolution that is forcing you not to publish what you think and what you like truly feel and what you want to express. And yeah. so it's like a real courageous act to do that routinely. I feel like you're talking to me directly right now, Tim. <laughs> I've been struggling with this so much lately. So this is a little cathartic for me and hopefully Ooh. our listeners too. Um, okay. Well, I have all these other questions I'd love to ask while I still have you. Um, you know, speaking about writing, I know that you're involved with copy blogger. Some yeah. places I see CEO, some places I see partner. I'm sure both are true. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about how you got involved and, and what you do with them now. I'd love to. Copy blogger has been a really big part of my life for a long time. Um, so starting at the beginning, the first blog or brand I ever started was called Sober Nation. It was when I was getting sober and trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life, trying to think like, how do I survive? I got mm -hmm. no education. You know, I was just, I was a contractor growing up and I was, that was fine, but I had to live a new kind of life. And I started writing and this blog eventually people started reading it. <laughs> like it's really all it was. And I'm thinking yeah. like, who are these people? How did they even find me? That's how I discovered SEO. And, uh, you know, got into it a little bit and found copy blogger. And so this was 10 years ago. Right. Wow. And copy blogger was, and still is, I think by a lot of people considered to be one of the most like authoritative, um, brands, websites, but also just like educational platform for people yeah. that want to be good writers. And so as I was waking up every morning and writing that day's article for Sober Nation, the first thing I would do is go to Copy Blogger and quite literally copy exactly what it is that they were doing, except just like translate it a bit for a recovery audience. So if they had a they had the blog post for the day that was like, I don't know, five ways to become a better editor, you know, uh, who knows, something like that. Yeah. I would do like five ways to become a better helper for somebody that is struggling. And then I would take the format, like where they put bullet points in their article. I'd be like, okay, this is where I'm going to put bullet points in my article. I can't, I can't say how much I ripped off what copy blogger <laughs> is doing. But it worked. And it's not yeah. like I plagiarized their material. I just... Oh, you learned. I'd say you yeah, learned. Yeah, I just learned, you know? Yeah. Um, and so Brian Clark, he was the founder of Copy Blogger. He became like a real hero to me. Um, years and years into it, he reached out to me on Twitter for the first time because... Well, I guess just he noticed me because I would like his stuff and just comment from time to time. Right. And I'm a huge fight club Fan. The book, especially the movie is amazing. Don't get me wrong, but the book also had a real impact on me. And there's a line in it where Tyler Durden says, you are not your fucking khakis. And so uh, that's always been in my Twitter bio. I and the first that. thing Brian Clark ever said to me is me being the doofus I am, I had the contraction wrong. So instead of like, you are not your as a possessive, I did it as like a, a, a plural. <laughs> yeah. And so the first thing my hero ever says to me is he reaches out to me on Twitter. He's like, hey, by the way, like <laughs> your your grammar is wrong. And uh and I'm in the Fort Lauderdale airport going through baggage claim. I'm like, oh my God, like Brian Clark. Um, and so that's how like we first met each other and we just exchange DMs from time to time. Yeah. Um, and it was cool. And 10 years later, I Sober Nation is doing what it's doing. That's still a company that I own and, and really means a lot to me. And my agency had been doing really well. Um, and basically, I was in a position to be able to come on board as a partner. Some things awesome. happened as a result of me publishing my work. It was my podcast, actually. 
Okay. Like I met somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who introduced me to somebody, you know, and, um, and yeah, I, I was able to buy the majority share of the company. It was right before my 10 year anniversary of, of getting clean. And the whole thing sort of came in this weird full circle type, uh, symbolism, I guess you could say. Um, and that's, that's how I got involved with it. Um, so I think technically I am the CEO. I don't even know. Really. <laughs> it doesn't matter. There's only three of us. Right. But no, but it's a powerful, powerful website. And I had a vision for it. I, I knew I didn't want to build like a huge 20 person team. Like it was before. I just don't have any yeah. interest in that. And so I got one employee and, and my assistant, um, and we just built like a really good system around it. And, uh, I'm really proud of it. Like it was the scariest, dumbest thing I've ever done. Um, it really was. Like the website didn't have any revenue attached to it. It was just a blog. It, it was mm. just a, it was just attention. You know, it was hundred thousand or so people on the email list and a blog. But what it had is so copy blog has been around so long that this was even before, like. Uh, social media was a big deal. And so back then when you would post articles, they would go onto RSS feeds Mm -hmm. and you can't really do that anymore. They just don't exist. Yeah. So to find a website that had the kind of backlink profile that copy blogger has, is very, very, very challenging because people don't link to each other. Like they used to to tweet stuff, you know? And so I saw that and I said, I can SEO this website. Copy blogger was never actually SEOed really well. Um, I can create services around it. I can create a product around it. And it's been three years or so, but we're doing it and it's it's going really well. So it was terrifying. Wow. It probably didn't make sense business-wise. Like if I was a business coach and somebody came to me with that, I'd be like, this probably isn't the deal. You know, it's it's yeah. a lot of money. There's no revenue, maybe not, but there's just something inside of me that said, like, even if I lose all my money, I, I'm just gonna give this a shot. I'll really regret it if I don't do it. Yeah. Um, and now, now we're now we're cruising. It's going really well. So, going back to what you said about Sober Nation, like it's it's your other business or one of your three businesses right now. What does that look like today? Uh well, really good. Um, <laughs> we're, like I'm having a problem with it, and this is going to sound so pretentious that we built the website from a structural standpoint so well in the beginning that it's difficult for me to update the site because Mm -hmm. if I update the site and I redesign it and I change some of the link structure and the web format, like I'm really, really terrified that I'm going to crush my rankings. Um, And it's not that I'm just coming up with this. Sober Nation is actually a part of there's four websites that basically do the same thing. Sober Nation was the first one that I built. And then me and my best friends, we all got sober together. We built these other sites. It's, it's the same wow. business model for like different niches and recovery, let's call it. Gotcha. Um, and over time, we've like rebuilt these other sites. And okay. sometimes it succeeded. And sometimes it's really crashed and burned. And I'm not joking, like painful. Wow. I can't believe this happened. Yikes. So I have this whole big redesign lined up and me and my partner have been working on it forever, but it's just like every single month because we spent so much time on the content on that site and it's like more and more authoritative. Right. It's growing and keeps growing and keeps growing. So like, I can't, like, I'm too scared to relaunch <laughs> it into this new vision that I have because I, I don't want to shock Google too much. Um, and so here's, here's like the thing that keeps happening that makes me realize that not doing anything is actually the best method is that, uh, you know, sometimes, especially for SEOs, you get lost in like the graphs and the traffic and the keywords and you forget that there's like real people reading it, you know, but, um, the messages that I get every day from people that are either like, Hey, thank you. This helped me so much. Or like, Hey, this article helped me have a conversation with my mom or, you know, like I got sober. It it just happened to me the other day. Um, Someone found me on Twitter. They sent me a DM. It just happened to me. Someone said, hey, I read this article and it was the inspiration I needed. And I'm reaching out to you now to let you know that I just got a year sober. And wow. Yeah. Like it's, it like really happens. And, and it's, it's tough to like just 
pass that by as no big deal, right? And so there's a weird side of me that feels very responsible to protect the architecture of the website because even though it's imperfect, and even though it may not fit this grand vision that I have of what I want the brand to be, and and the new styling and the new logo and all of that guru market yeah. stuff, there's a side of me that feels really, really protective of what it is, which was always a way for me to do what we were just talking about. I was helping people just by expressing myself. So I, I like. <laughs> Like I said, it sounds pretentious. No, it's, like a, it's it's all thriving. But my biggest problem right now is that it's just going so well that I can't make it better because I'm scared to. <laughs> <I know. laughs> this new vision that you have, like, is it more of just design wise and navigation wise, or what exactly. else is baked in? Okay. Yeah, design and navigation. It's, yeah, it's, that's exactly what it is. Those two things. Okay. There's some. There's some problems with the site uh-huh. currently. Um, broken links. You, you know how it is. Right. So regular people won't see, but I look at it and I think this bothers me so much. But uh, well, you've been working on it for what? It. Like seven to 10 years now you've been working on it? 10. Yeah. 10. I, I, I first started in 2011. Yeah. Do you remember what your first blog post was about? Um, I do, but <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. What actually ha- oh, happened okay. is I had a mentor basically when I moved to Florida, a guy that I still talk to was really helping me, helping me get my life together. And he bought me a subscription to success magazine and a success magazine used to come with CDs, which doesn't make me sound old. Like I said, I'm only 36. It's just wild to me to think that CDs aren't even a thing anymore. When 10 oh, years no. ago, it's all that we used. And yeah. there was a CD with an interview with a guy named Seth Godin. And yeah. I didn't know who Seth Godin was. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't even really know much about the internet. Like I said, I was a, I was a carpenter my whole life. And in this interview, he talked about it was when he published purple cow and you know, it was a long interview. And so I was like, wow, this guy's ideas really speak to me. I like what he has to say. And at the end mm-hmm. of it, there's the typical question it was like, if somebody's just starting out, like, what do you, what would you tell them? And he says, start a blog. Don't tell anybody about it and write in it every day. And so that's what I did. I didn't think about it harder than that. I went to Blogspot, which also <laughs> doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. You know, I had a blog spot. Yeah, of course you did. Yeah. Um, and I just I started writing. So the answer, the first post I ever wrote was how to make a perfect peanut butter and jelly sandwich. No way. Yeah. That's <laughs> amazing. 100% serious. It's the first thing I ever wrote. And uh, eventually that blog spot turned into Sober Nation, you know, because okay. that blog was, it was mostly me writing about getting sober because I was losing yeah. my mind. Right. Like I had no idea what I was doing. I just I left Philly. I'm in South Florida. I like don't have any money scared. There's lizards running around. Like I'll, <laughs> I'll never forget seeing the lizards for the first time. Just being like, where am I? Or is um, like a mini Australia with its wildlife. Certainly. Yes. Yeah, certainly. And uh, how to make a perfect PB and J was yeah. there pictures on it? Uh, there was. Yeah. <laughs> There was. That's really cool. I feel like if more people just started a blog and wrote and didn't tell anybody about it, there'd be more good blogs out there. Yeah. <laughs> As people start a blog and then promote it before there's actually good shit. And I'm like, ah, backwards. Yeah. So. I totally agree. So Stodzi, your agency, where does that come in? What timing along all this stuff? Um, pretty soon. So I'd say 2012. So Sobernation was around for about a year before I saw an opportunity. I got into SEO really fast. Yeah. I, I knew it. I was like, I love writing. I'm reading Copyblogger. Copyblogger tells me that I can make a living by writing. Mm-hmm. I don't need to know any more than that. I'm just going to go for it. And I saw, I discovered SEO Moz as well because, uh, well, just because I liked SEO, the idea of it was was cool. Right. And there was a, article written by this guy named Mike. Um, 
Oh man, I can't remember his last name. He still owns his agency. It's called Nifty Marketing. <laughs> and he was really into local SEO. And he wrote this like 15 page huge guide on the Moz blog back when Moz used to have like that public blog that anybody could publish on. Oh and, yeah. Um, and in that article, he said that he was going to start an agency and he brought it to his friend. And his friend said, there's got to be like 30,000 something agencies in the country. Like, what are you going to do differently that anybody couldn't do? And it was the, Mike Ramsey. No, not Mike Ramsey. That's the, that's the weird Nashville guy. Um, and Mike said that it was right then and there that he knew that he had to do local hmm. because it's just a way for him to differentiate himself. And I read that. And at the time, I was starting to get treatment centers, um, either behavioral health care centers or even like mental health facilities reaching out to me because nobody had ever actually created a brand for like sobriety before. It just wasn't, just wasn't done. And I'm thinking like, why do these people want to talk to me? And I realized it's just because healthcare and like these topics are still a little bit stigmatized and people yeah. were apprehensive to market themselves in that way, like a treatment right. center or healthcare center. And I just didn't know any better. Like I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know that. And so I just went for it. I was just writing. That's all I was doing. And, you know, I, I saw these places reaching out to me. I was like, damn, I think these people are like trying to pay me. Like, I think they're actually <laughs> trying to like hire yeah. me to create content for them. Um, and then at that time I read that article from Mike Mike something. If you go to Nifty Marketing, that's that's the company that he owns. And he says, I have to do something specific. I have to do something that isn't competing with all the other agencies out there. It and was it's... Mike Ramsey. It was? Yeah, that's his name. Cool. And it, it just clicked to me. I was like, I can start a marketing agency that works only with treatment centers. And uh, you know, I didn't have like a grand vision. I didn't have like a business plan. It, it wasn't anything like that. I just, I just kept taking these signs that my life was giving me. You know, copy blogger told me that I could be a writer and mm -hmm. make money doing it. Mike Ramsey said that you can start an agency, but like you have to differentiate yourself in some way. I'm like, in, in Purple Cow with the Seth Godin book, I read that, and and Seth Godin says it's better to be different than it is to be better. And I think to myself, like, well, I'm different. Like I've been different my whole life. You know, I'm 23 mm -hmm. years old and I don't even drink anymore. Like that doesn't make any sense. Um, and so I just, just putting these things together. I was like, you know, what was the worst that, that can happen. And that's how Stasi was born. And we've been doing it ever since. That's awesome. So how is it going today? Like how many clients and how many employees, if, if you feel comfortable sharing? Yeah, totally. I don't, I don't mind any of that stuff. Um, it's going great. We got, I think, like 10 in-house people now. Um, awesome. Yeah, it's it's been a whole nother experience with work from home. One of the highlights of my life was when we had the office in South Florida, and yeah. we just had so much fun. Um, there's definitely benefits to us being all over the world now, but yeah. it's hard to nail like the culture stuff. And so we have to work really, really hard to make sure that everybody like feel as a part of something. Yeah. And that's something that, that is, is. Yeah. It's challenging and it's something that I take very seriously. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to humble brag at all. Like we're, we're really, really doing well. It's, it's very yeah. successful. And um, I think we got like 30 something clients. We're still pretty small, all things considered. Like I said, I don't necessarily have any right. interest in being you know, like a Gary Vaynerchuk or anything like that. Right. I like doing work and making money and having fun. <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's where we are, but we'll, we'll keep growing. Um, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep growing. It's, it's going great. That's awesome. Yeah. I feel like that's how I first found you was when I had that potential wreck for you. Uh, I, yeah, I just right. saw you in passing and it was so impressive to me. I don't even know if the right word, well, impressive is definitely a factor, but knowing that you had experience and you had your own community that was relevant to your clients, I feel like that is the most powerful thing for agency owners or just 
service providers in general. Yeah. Would you say that that's really helped you or how has your experience with addiction kind of impacted how you do business with your clients? It's it's absolutely helped me. It's helped for two reasons. One, because I know how to speak to them, um, which helps a lot, especially mm-hmm. if you're trying to convert somebody. But it's also helped because of the credibility. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest problems with agencies, well, I shouldn't say problems because like nobody's obligated to do anything. I think one of the challenges for people that want to start an agency is that you have to fake your credibility because how's anybody else going to know unless you mm-hmm. just put yourself out there? And yeah. it's part of the process. You know, like you got to do it. But I'm always weary in SEO in particular, where you go to someone's website, it's like, oh, we're like an SEO agency. It's like, well, how do you get your clients? And it's like not SEO. And mm-hmm. so, and so it's been really advantageous for me to be able to say, quite frankly, and just point blank, like, look, you don't have to believe me. Like, I actually don't care if you believe me or not. Just look at what I've already built. Yeah. And like, call me back if you want. And if not, that's fine too, because it's your money. Do whatever you want to do. But being able to just show people, don't listen to what I say, watch what I've done has been like very, very powerful in terms of a marketing standpoint, but also a sales standpoint, because I don't, I don't have that initial hurdle to get over. I almost, it, it gives me like leverage in, in conversations a lot, which yeah. is helpful. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So yes. you have Sober Nation copy blogger, Stasi. And I saw on your website, you also have Bootstrapper. Oh yeah. What is that? Uh, I've always wanted to have my own product. Um, I just started it really. Yeah. And like, this was a Brian Clark thing. I remember being way younger and listening to one of Brian Clark's podcasts. And he just said like a monthly a digital product with monthly recurring revenue is the holy grail of online entrepreneurship. That's what he said. And so mm-hmm. for some reason, and it's it's kind of bad advice now because there's actually other ways to do it. But for some reason, when I heard that, I thought, oh, well, that's just what I need to do. Like I need to create my own product and other stuff always got in the way, um, as is always the case, right? Like it's hard to to work on your own membership site when you got 30 something clients and, you know, like 10 in-house employees and yeah. other contractors. It's, it's hard to manage that. And so, um, and then I took on copy blogger and that got crazy, but this is going somewhere. I promise. <laughs> One of the things that I've really dove into, I think COVID helped me with this a lot was just the importance of like documented systems. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean like yeah, I'll just do it this way. I mean, doing the awful, painful, shitty work of like sitting in your computer for hours and just painstakingly create the systems that run your operations and writing them down. Like that's oh, the most important part. Worst. Like, really, it's the worst. It's terrible. Um, but I've gotten really into it the last couple of years because I just saw the effects of it. And yeah. it's like, wow. Like people ask me all the time, like, you must work all the time. And I work hard for sure, but I, I do have a life. Like I, I go, I work out with my wife every morning. We go to the Y and we work out every morning. I do more Thai two to three times a week. Like I sit down to eat dinner every night and like I, I have a life. And mm-hmm. the reason why it might appear like I'm doing so much is because I've really made it a point to make the systems like the, the important and not urgent things in my life. Like if there's other stuff going on, no matter how urgent that stuff is, I actually, I just kind of ignore it and it might turn into a problem, you know, and like, (laughs) but I just keep ignoring my problems and keep thinking about important, not urgent, important, not urgent. And then over time, the things that really matter just sort of come to the surface. And so, and so with that, like, Server Nation and Sazi and Coffee Blogger, they're they're pretty great in terms of just running themselves. And I, I got to this point where I was like, well, I have to start my product now. I've been wanting to do this for 10 years. You know, I've been 
been thinking about doing it for 10 years. And so, um, and it was also good because I learned membership sites are harder than they seem. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a lot, like what tech stack do you use? What are you going to include? Like, are you going to do live videos? Are you just going to record them and show them to other people? Like how are you going to send it to people? Is there a newsletter? It's, It's a lot of stuff. And so in working with other partners with copy blogger and the product we created there i just learned a lot of the fundamentals of like do's and don'ts of, of how to do it yeah. that simple and like you can overdo it with membership sites you know like you can give too much and make it too too annoying and i just i i feel like i landed a really really good spot and so i officially launched it on um july 1st and wow yeah, like it it's, it's still really new. Yeah, thank you. We got 126 members. Um, and I'm incredible. loving it. It's like congratulations. It's, yeah, thank you. It's it's back. To, you know how it is when you first start some and you get like the notifications and it's like oh like I got another subscriber. You know, it's it's been like that. It's been really <laughs> cool and, and really fun. I love that feeling. Um, Me too. Well, I have like four bonus questions. I like to ask everybody um, more of just generic stuff. Could be conversation starters, could just be a Q&A. But what's one thing about, I guess we'll go with entrepreneurship that most people disagree with you on. So what's one thing you believe about entrepreneurship that most people would say, nah? Um, More and more to debt. Well, there's two of them that are kind of tied. One is that sales is basically the most important thing. Like it's we're in a real product driven tech world and audience world and social media world. And there's so many times I look and I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like Mm -hmm. sell some stuff. Stop worrying about it. Like go sell some stuff. Like go to a go to a chamber of commerce. Go shake someone's hand and give them your business card. You'd be like, hey, like. I want you to buy this thing from me. I can help you. Yeah. So I, I like, I don't know. I, I don't think it's that people disagree with me on. I think that everybody is looking at the wrong stuff. Yeah. And everybody would be 10 times more successful if they swallowed their pride. They admitted that sales is really terrifying and just went for it and like stumbled over it and got hung up on. And had those awful fall in your face moments where like you want to cry in a corner because of how bad a pitch went. You know, if unless you figure that out, you're always going to be chasing the next retweet or the next like or whatever the modern thing is. But but sales and communicating with people and exchanging value, that's always going to be there. And I, I think everybody gets that wrong. Yeah, I, I feel like it's also a symptom of this like remote work, like work from home, yep. be online all the time culture, um, probably partially due to COVID and partially just where we are as a society. And mm-hmm. even when he said like you wanted to go to dinner with Alex, to, like be around people, I'm like, every time I go do something during the week, I'm like, ah, people, humans. And like, I'm very <laughs> introverted. So if mm-hmm. I'm feeling that driven to like see people, I can't imagine how some folks are like starving for being around other people um, and doing so with the, you know, the intent of like sharing what you're working on or maybe making a sale or making a connection. I feel like that's kind of died a bit depending on what industry you're in. I, I totally agree. It's a huge opportunity. And that's the part that keeps blowing my mind. It's the thing that matters most is the most wide open space right now. And so like, what are you, what are you all doing? You're yeah. all playing in the rat race when the rat race is busier than it's ever been. Yeah. And, you know, sell something. Yeah. <laughs> Such a good point. Okay. Next question. When's the last time you changed your mind on something and why? Um, ironically, <laughs> I have changed my mind about the power of social media. So this is completely, um, it's like a juxtaposition against what I just said. Right. But I've grown all my companies through long form writing. Um, I, if I had to pick one, I would still choose that for sure. But I went for it with Twitter, especially, and it has done wonders to grow my email list, especially my personal 
thing with the with the bootstrapper because that's my product attached to like my my personal blog. But right. here's also what I've learned about it, which I think is very dangerous. All of social like social media only works if you talk about social media. And most people like aren't in that world. They're in a, they're a, they they have a coffee shop or they're a plumber or they're uh yeah who knows anything else except some like Twitter tech boy that wants to use Twitter to talk about why you should use Twitter to help you use Twitter. And so if you're not in that game, then I still think social media is a waste of time. But like now that I am dipping my toe in that game a little bit, as kind of cringy as sometimes it may be, mm-hmm. I'm enjoying it a lot. And the value that I've gotten from social media has been immense. So I've changed my mind about that. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a lot more of your tweets lately. I mean, I've really enjoyed them. I feel like not everyone puts as, as much thought into them as folks like you do. Sometimes it's just content for the sake of it, but totally. yeah, I feel like as long as you adjust your expectations and have the right goals, um, definitely powerful. This question is interesting because I've heard you share a lot of advice you've received over the years. It seems like you've had a lot of good influences and mentors, but if you had to dial down to one most impactful piece of advice you've ever received, what would you say that is? That same mentor that I told you about, he wasn't actually my mentor. He was my sponsor. Sometimes people that don't know about like AA and 12 steps just don't get what that means. So I always say he's my mentor, right? But the same guy that bought me that issued a success magazine, he helped me get sober. He he saved my life basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he still tells me every time he says, don't forget, Tim, shoot for midnight. And basically all that means is it's, I mean, you're on video. It's, it's one of my tattoos. It says, make it to midnight. And it's a clock that is, is just before midnight. Okay. And uh, the idea behind it is that all you ever have to do is get to midnight, no matter what's going on in your life. So from like a recovery standpoint, it's like, oh, you feel like, like doing some dope, right? You can do it, but just get to midnight first and then get to midnight again the next day. And so it breaks down these really big, audacious fears into yeah. like, actually, the only thing I have to do is get through the day. And if that problem is still around tomorrow, then I guess I can succumb to my fear or like, I maybe I'll just get to midnight again that next day. And so from that example, like, you know, the, the fears are always like, what do I do at my sister's wedding? Or like, what do I do at my, my family's Scottish. And so every Thanksgiving we would take shots of McCullum. It's a, it's a scotch. Yeah. Say what we're grateful for. Like, what do I do at Thanksgiving? And it's like, I actually don't even have to think about that right now. All I have to do is get to midnight. Um, and so I'm a very anxious person and I'm like super high strung and, you know, I, I'm, I'm like have a lot of energy. And so sometimes my thoughts can just, oh, can yeah. just take over. And without a doubt, the most important piece of advice I've ever gotten has been that because no matter what's going on in my life, anything just like, Oh, you know what? That's, that's pretty tough, but I'm just going to get to midnight. And then that's all I got to do. Wow. That's incredible. I really like that. It's changed my life. Okay. I'm going to close it on that note because (laughs) I like that final note. The last thing I'll ask you is if there's, you know, what would you like to tell our listeners anything about you, anything you're currently promoting or want to share? No, just just my blog. I'm I'm grateful to be at a point in my life where I'm actually getting to do some of like the creative entrepreneurial writing that mm-hmm. I've always wanted to, but you know, imposter syndrome didn't mm. <laughs> didn't allow me to do. And so timstods.com, I send a newsletter out every Friday. I think it's pretty awesome. Truthfully, like I spend a lot of time on it and every time I send it out, I'm like I would like that newsletter. That's good. (laughs) And so I think you guys will like it too. Um, And that's it. I'm I'm available to anybody. I enjoy DMs from strangers. So (laughs) I'm not like too cool to talk to you. That's how we met. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's how we met. Um, And and I'd be, be happy to talk and learn more about anybody that wants to reach out. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining me today, Tim. Oh, my pleasure. It was great. You're really good at this. (laughs) Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome.